Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-tubercular agents. This video covers MC3 syllabus of unit 3. That unit 3 includes anti-tubercular agents. So in this video I will explain about synthetic drugs used to treat tuberculosis, antibiotics, their mechanisms of action and structure, nomenclature and synthesis. This is my YouTube channel. If you like the video, share the content and subscribe the channel. Let's get into the topic. Now, TB is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, TB organism is different because its cell wall is made up of a waxy coat that is mycolic acid. Mycolic acid contains long chain carbons which gives a kind of waxy appearance. Hence, it is called as mycobacterium. Mycos means wax in Greek. Now, you need to understand this. Usually, the gram-positive, gram-negative uh, uh, bacteria cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. Now, peptidoglycan will get affected by beta-lactam antibiotics. Beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams, carbapenems. So, all these classes are ineffective in case of TB because the cell wall here it is mycolic acid but not peptidoglycan. Hence, we cannot use all these drugs to treat tuberculosis. Now, another unique feature, this is an acid fast bacteria and it gives a positive test for gel nizan stain which gives a bright red color. Now, see the waxy cell wall is very hard and it is resistant to disinfectants and it can survive on dry surfaces. Now, the organism appears rod in shape and it needs oxygen so it is a strict aerob aerobic organism. So, these are the some of the features about mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, See, when TB affects an individual, our human system will contain the TB organism. What happens is, it, it is contained by uh, immunity system, so it becomes a latent infection. That means no symptoms will be there, but it remains inside the body. Due to the age or during diseases like AIDS, wherein immunity is decreased. When immunity is decreased, immediately the organism starts multiplying and becomes active infection. So understand this thing, tuberculosis is completely based on the effectiveness of our immune system. Most of the eight HIV positive patients will test positive for tuberculosis because their weakened immune system gives active infection. Now, some other things. Mm, look at this. Now, synthetic anti-tubercular drugs. The synthetic drugs are isoniazid, ethionamide, ethambutal, pyrazinamide, paramino salicylic acid. Now, look at this. This is how the cell wall of tuberculosis organism appears. It has got this mycolic acid and with majority of mycolic acid makes the cell wall and then after that we have cell membrane is there. Now, when you see isoniazid, ethambutal, both of them will inhibit mycolic acid synthesis. When this mycolic acid synthesis is inhibited, cell wall is inhibited and cell death occurs. Now, ethambutal inhibits cell wall. See, there is a difference. Isoniazid, ethionamide will affect the component of cell wall that is mycolic acid, whereas ethambutal directly affect cell wall. Now, pyrazinamide inhibits cell membrane synthesis and translation. See, this pyrazinamide will inhibit cell membrane synthesis. For the last one, paramino salicylic acid, it, it acts like sulfonamide drugs. It affects folic acid synthesis in the TB organism. Now, when folic acid synthesis is inhibited, protein synthesis is inhibited and it acts as bacteriostatic agent. It inhibits the cell multiplication. Now, anti-tubercular antibiotics. When you see this, you have rifampicin, rifabutin, streptomycin, capriomycin, cyclosidine. Now, Rifamycins, they inhibit RNA synthesis by targeting RNA polymerase. Streptomycin, it is a protein synthesis inhibitor which targets 30 years ribosomal subunit. Maculid also a protein synthesis inhibitor. And cycloserine, it inhibits cell wall of bacteria. So, these are all the major class of drugs, synthetic drugs and antibiotics and their mechanism of action. Now, certain things with uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis is, see the problem with this organism is it has got a different kind of cell wall and cell multiplication is very slow. Usually all these antibiotics and synthetic drugs were very effective with rapidly dividing cells. Rapidly dividing cells but this organism is very it divides very slowly hence the effectiveness of all these drugs antibiotics as well as synthetic drugs is a little bit low. Second one these organisms stay deep inside the tissues. So penetration of these drugs is little bit limited hence the effectiveness is limited that is the reason why treating tuberculosis will become a little bit of difficult one 
Now, let us get into the chemistry and all of them. So, this is isoniazid. See, isoniazid is also known as INH, which is commonly ca called as isonicotinic acid, isonicotinic acid, hydrazine, hydrazine. Now, so this part is isonicotic acid and this one is hydrazide. Now, when you see the IOPS name, it is pyridine 4 carbohydrazide. Look at them. So, this ring is pyridine. This is 1, 2, 3 and 4. At fourth place you have carbo is there and hydrazide linkage is there. So very simple one, it is pyridine 4 carbohydrazide. Let us see the synthesis of isoniazid. It starts with 4 methyl pyridine. So this is pyridine ring and this is fourth position. At fourth position you have methyl group is there. It undergoes oxidation by using various oxidizing agents like KMNO4 and all. Oxidation results in isonicotinic acid. This is what is isonicotinic acid. And when hydrazine is used, a simple nucleophilic addition reaction takes place with dehydration and that results in isoniazid. So, simple step, it starts with 4-methylpyridine, oxidation results in isonicotinic acid and treating with hydrazine results in isoniazid. Now, the next one is 4-amino salicylic acid which is also known as para-amino salicylic acid. So, this Benzene ring on which a carboxylic acid and hydroxyl groups are in adjacent position is known as salicylic acid. To this para position, amine group is there, hence it is known as para amino salicylic acid. Now, organic chemistry ways, when you see the IUPAC name, at fourth position you have amine group is there, and this is one, and at second position hydroxy group is there, and the basic ring is benzoic acid. So, 4 amino, 2 hydroxy benzoic acid. As I told you already, para amino, ben para amino salicylic acid inhibits folic acid synthesis in organism. So the synthesis, it starts with salicylic acid. When salicylic acid is nitrated in presence of nitric acid, nitration occurs at para position. Because this group is para directory, so the substitution occurs at para position, it results in 2-hydroxy 4-nitrobenzoic acid. When it is reduced in, in presence of metal and hydrochloric acid, it gives para amino salicylic acid. Very simple steps in synthesis, it starts with salicylic acid, nitration results in para nitro substitution and reduction in presence of iron acid gives para amino salicylic acid. Now the other drugs like ethambutal. See ethambutal is made up of ethane and diimino groups to which two butanol groups are attached. So it is 2 to 1 to ethane diyl imino di1 butanol. So this one is one butanol, this one is another butanol. As we have seen ethambutal affects cell wall synthesis of mycobacterium. Now pyrazinamide, pyrazinamide is, is another drug. It has got a pyrazine ring and amide linkage. So IUPAC, it, it is known as pyrazine 2 carboxy amide. So 1 at second position you have carboxy amide group is there. Now the last one, ethionamide. Ethionamide, IUPAC name, see, this is first position. At second position you have an ethyl group is there and the ring is pyridine. And at fourth position, carbothiamide is there. So this is thia group is there. If oxygen is there, carbamide it is called. Th because sulfur is there, it is called as carbothiamide. So again, ethionamide, uh, like uh, isoniazid, it affects mycolic acid biosynthesis. So these are all the chemistry aspects of anti-tubercular agents which are given in uh, medicinal chemistry syllabus. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.